Oops. Boom, 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 boom. Welcome back. Good evening from the Flying Cant Ranch at Cedar Creek, Lake Texas. Earlier today, I reviewed, I had to change my location for a second, the uh, Walther P08. This is the blowback version, and I gave a little history of its development at phases through time. My glass is off. That being said, later on, as time went by, we get up with, um, and I'll explain to you why in a minute, the Walther P38. So before you go any further, we're going to tell you this is the Walther P38 blowback BB pistol. It shoots a 177 or 4.5 millimeter BB. It is 400 feet per second, so claimed. The overall length is 8.5 and the barrel length is 4.75 and it weighs 1.60 pounds. So, the Swiss kind of went for the Walther. I don't think the Germans really got into it real big, big. But in the 1930s, they started looking at the P38. Now, the original ones did not have the exposed hammer. And they kind of looked a little bit like a, um, oh, like a uh, Browning High Power. And then later on, they came out with the, and I don't remember the exact year, I believe it was 19, this was developed in 1930. And then the, the, in 1938, you got the MP version, which meant military um, pistol. Not military police, but military pistol. Then it kind of went to an AP, which was the army pistol. And then it got switched back around to being the MP, which then had the exposed hammer and such. And this is what you ended up with. So. Um, without further ado, let's look it over. So on um, many of its developments was, oh, the strap here, the older ones had a habit of maybe the original ones actually would kind of bounce off the guide rail. And that was not very desirable to say the least. And then it went through other developments and changes and requests. And you end up with this. Um, so down this side, there's really not much to see. You have a pretty wide sight in the back. It's very clear on, and I put the little white up on the front blade. If we come around to this side, there's also a takedown lever. You can take this apart, pull it apart. I'm not gonna do that on camera right now because I never have did it. And I don't want to embarrass myself like I did on the last one. Then you have a little lever here that you can Kind of uh, jack your slide back, push that up, and it will lock your slide. And there it goes. And I think I'm set up to release that. And then we're back to here. Now, I wanted to do something a little different. I made this video earlier, but I forgot to mention a few things. So, in order to get the magazine out, and you have to have the magazine out to put the CO2 in. So, you're going to Kind of like a lot of older guns, there's a little lever here. You're going to push that, and out comes the magazine. We're going to lay that down here for a second. Then you're going to see like a lanyard ring. This will be if you're holding a pistol to your left. And you're going to hook that, and that is going to kind of, don't get crazy, pop off. And this is where you put your CO2 in. So... I already have a live CO2 in it. Basic thing is this not a spring type uh, thing, but you're gonna twist it clockwise to lock your CO2, counterclockwise to get it back out. And that's how you do that. There is a couple of holes, and you've got these pins right here, the tabs at the top of the grip. You're just gonna kinda line those in, clip, and you're back in business. That's pretty simple. That's how it looks. So, with that being said, now I want to go over something else 
I'm going to show you something. Now, I also forgot to mention the video. So we're going to uh, very carefully try to shake some of these out of here. May or may not work. This mag holds about maybe 20 rounds. This is that mag that has got your little slide piece here, comes down and pushes forward. So if this is facing you, the tab will be on your, your lockdown will be to your left. You want to put a finger behind that hole right there. Kind of hold it upright. I've showed these before. And you just gently drop your BBs down in it. Again, this is a, um, I believe it's a 20 round kick up deal. And uh, if you don't put your finger on the back, they may have a tendency to roll out. And uh, don't lean it real forward, or they'll just want to fall out. And if you lean it too far back, they kind of go back there and get stuck. But you can just shake them a little bit. They'll fall down in there. It's no big thing. Put your other finger over it. And that looks like it's pretty, pretty loaded. I personally like to put a finger right here to keep that from flying. But it went up. It's in. Now to insert this, this rounded part, you want that forward and the long piece, which is going to catch your locking mechanism, and you're in. So that's pretty much how it was put together. Now, I would say around 1930, they started playing with developing this. The original ones kind of didn't have the exposed hammer. They were shorter and um, looked a little bit like the Brownie High Power in some ways. Most were chambered for 9mm. Then they made a longer version. Um, and that kind of did a little better. It has some different locking glides. Again, I, I really urge you to watch uh, Forgotten Weapons. He goes in great, great detail into the developmental stage of this gun over a period of time. And then um, in 1938, um, Germany sort of adopted this along with Switzerland. But at one time it was called the MP, meaning military pistol. For a very short time they had the AP, which is called the army pistol. And then it was back to the MP with the exposed hammer like you see right here. And... Um, uh, at that time, Germany still was messing around with the very fascinating Luger, but or the P08. But the problem was it had a lot of parts to it. It was more expensive to manufacture, whereas this one had less parts, henceforth cheaper to manufacture, and so goes the course of life. So this is the one that really saw most of the military usage. Now, some of these were actually chambered, I believe, for 45. And some of these actually did have a cutout right up in here where you had a flip lever. And you could add a wooden stock to it and lock it into place. Some had a little bit longer barrels. Uh, kind of like they did with the, uh, the Luger version. So that being said... Um, I believe you can maybe see this gun at some times in some of the James Bond movies back in the day, uh, be that as it is. But this gun is all metal. It's very metal, the trigger's metal. I want to say again, this is not in the Umarex Legends line. I think it should be, but it's not. But um, this looks like it might have a little rifling at the business end. Um, or as the, the P08, the Ruger, Luger, I'm sorry, has this diamond pattern. Feels kind of hefty. Um, this one has the rib type grip to it. And it maybe doesn't feel quite as good as material, but I think it's going to do. Again, this has a takedown lever on this side. I'm not going to embarrass myself today and play with it. Maybe later. What we're going to do now is I've given you a little history of how this sort of got adopted as the military gun. 
And uh, needless to say, it was pushed all over the world. I mean, sales are sales. And uh, that being the case. So um, we'll put together a shooting review. We'll get this knocked out. And then we'll move on. So you got a little history of two different guns. Once again, I really would advise you to watch Forgotten Weapons of the Yon. He's very, very knowledgeable. He has a whole slew of these on a video to the different, different transformations of the actual gun. Most of those, I believe, are owned by the same collector, and it ended up with, the, I believe, the Rock Iron Armory for, for auction. So let's put together a shooting video. Let's make this happen, and we'll be right back.